Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this is the Google Pixel 8a. I thought we'd unbox it, set it up, take a first look at it, and compare it with the Pixel 8 Pro and maybe the Pixel Fold. Now this is the budget device that comes in at $499, but if you get it through Google Fi, they'll give you $300 back if you keep your service for about 120 days. So that's a pretty good deal if it's around $200 or so. It comes in 128 and 256 gigabyte variants, but the 256 is 559, but only available in the obsidian color. So this is the Allo color. We also have a bay color option, just like the Google Pixel 8 Pro, and then also a porcelain color. Now let's go ahead and unbox it. You can see it's the 8A here with 128 gigabytes. So let's go ahead and open it up. So pull tabs here. And let's see what it looks like. I haven't seen one of these in person, but you'll see what it looks like here. So this is the aloe color. You've got this little plastic piece on it. Let me remove that. There we are. And inside the box, we've got a couple different things. So they do give you a cable. They give you a USB-C to USB-C cable. And we also have an adapter for maybe switching from another device. And then in here, We've got a SIM card removal tool in the back. So if we take this out here, SIM card removal tool, and then inside the box here, let's see if we can open that up. That's everything. We have our safety and warranty card, and then it looks like just a couple different addresses to go to online if we want to learn more about the device. Very minimalist. Let's set this aside and take a closer look at the device itself. Before we take a closer look at the device, one thing I wanted to mention is this is the 30 watt adapter that you can buy separately. If it comes with the USB-C cable, it's $35 or it's 25 without. So pretty reasonable overall. Let's just open it up quickly, see if there's anything different here, but you will need this charger in order to charge it at its fastest rate, which really isn't that fast. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but we'll open it up here. And thanks to Google for sending both of these along. So these were a gift from Google, so that's always nice to check this out. And inside, we have our adapter and then USB-C cable. So that along with our warranty card. So basically everything you would expect. And this looks like the typical pixel adapter that we get. And it says 30 watts. So shows it there. And you can just use that with pretty much anything, but it's really nice, looks familiar. We've had the Google Pixel adapters for a while. When it comes to the device itself, well, the overall design looks pretty nice. It's a little bit different from what we have with the Pixel 8 Pro, so definitely a little smaller. You'll see the camera bump is less pronounced, it's not as big, and it has more of a brushed finish on it, which I think looks a little bit better. We have less cameras here, so we don't have a telephoto zoom lens built in, but we do have a flash and a couple different lenses. They both have similar textures on the back, and if we take a look around the outside edge, of course, we've got our power sleep wake button, we've got our volume button, and then if we go to the bottom, of course, we've got our speaker and microphone along with USB-C. And then on the other side, we've got a SIM card tray. And this supports actually a physical SIM card and then an additional eSIM. So you'll see there's the SIM card tray, as you would expect. No expandable storage, though. Along the top, we have another microphone with a couple antenna lines. On the front, of course, we have our display. Let's go ahead and turn it on. And this is a 6.1 inch actual display. So let's see if it turns on here. It's 1080 by 2400 at 430 pixels per inch. It's 120 hertz capable, which is really nice in this price point. And it has Corning Gorilla Glass 3. It also has an always on display with at a glance and now playing. And it has a very bright display that goes up to 2000 nits peak brightness or 1400 nits in HDR. So pretty much the top of the line for the brightness that we have among maybe an iPhone or a Pixel 8 Pro, but pretty good overall. Internally, the specs are pretty good. We have a Tensor G3 with 8 gigs of RAM, LPDDR5, with the Titan M2 coprocessor. So not the very top of the line RAM specs, but it should be fine for this device. Now we're at the setup screen where it says, welcome to your pixel. So we'll go ahead and get started here. Give it a second. And it says set up using another device. Well, you can use a pixel or Android device or an iPhone or iPad. So we can set it up with that. I think I'm going to use an S24 ultra to do that. So I actually have a Google Fi SIM card in here. So let me remove this. I'll place it in the other phone. So we'll go ahead and place my SIM card in here. 
there we are. And I'll connect one of the cables that comes with it so that we can actually get it set up between both devices. So we'll bring over the S24 ultra and on here I'll select pixel or Android device. And it says on your device, tap set up to open the scanner or use the camera app. So we'll do that. We have a QR code here. We'll open it up on the Samsung and get this set up and then we'll set up the pixel eight a. So we'll tap set up and it says it's connecting. There we go. We'll position that in here and then we'll continue via Wi-Fi. So I guess we don't need the cable. We'll just do everything wirelessly here. We'll give it a second. Now it wants me to verify it's me using my login passcode. We'll verify it says getting account info. Now we'll set up our fingerprint. So it actually connected to Google Fi. We'll go ahead and tap more and then we'll hit agree and hit start. So we'll set up our fingerprint here, touch and hold. Of course, just like any other fingerprint sensor, it says it's set up. We've added the fingerprint. We could add another and then we could use face unlock as well if we want to. So we'll set that up, center my face in it. Let's look around. There we are. And that's it. It says, looks good. Tap next. And now we'll copy our data from our Android device. We'll tap next here, checking a few things. And it says, continue on your pixel. I went through my account settings. Now it's connected. And now it's telling me about the limited warranty. Then we can read about it or tap next. I'll skip Google pay for now. You can set that up later and I'll, leave everything else and let it copy everything over. Now, as we're talking about this, it says it's going to take about six minutes. One thing I wanted to mention is it has pretty decent battery life, at least according to Google up to or over 24 hours. It has a 4,492 milliamp hour battery. It can charge wirelessly and it also has fast charging with that included brick I showed earlier. However, they call fast charging 18 Watts, which is pretty slow. According to Google, it says you need this 30 watt adapter to do that. It says up to 18 Watts though. So not very fast but you can use it, but that will preserve the battery over time. Aside from that, it has IP67 dust and water resistance, and it has Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3. So no Wi-Fi 7 here, but I don't think most people need that or even have a router that supports that, especially if you're buying a, a Pixel 8a. So if you have an 8 Pro, maybe you would want that. It completed copying everything. We'll tap done. And now it says getting your phone ready. So I'll move the S24 ultra out of the way and wait for this to complete. And now, as far as the overall size comparison, well, I showed you the pixel eight pro before. So this gives you an idea of the overall size. So definitely a little bit smaller and some people may prefer that the other side here as well. So you'll see it's a little bit narrower. It's somewhere in between the size of the pixel eight pro and the pixel fold. So you'll see it's a little bit taller than the pixel fold, but not quite as wide. So that gives you an idea if you've seen any of these devices and also with the S24 ultra. So if you've seen any of those, that'll give you an idea of what size it actually is. We'll go ahead and unlock it. It unlocked using the front camera. Let's swipe up. And here's the pixel home screen. This matches basically what we had on the S24 ultra. And of course, doesn't seem like there's a whole a lot of apps here but pre-installed, you've got your basic apps, no extra bloatware or anything like that. Let's see what version is pre-installed with it as it's installing a lot of apps. And it comes installed with the March 5th, 2024 Android security update. However, there is an update already available. Now, as we wait for everything to install, let's take a closer look at the display. It does have fairly large bezels, a larger bezel at the bottom, and the display probably has PWM. So we'll go ahead and unlock it there. And that means what it's doing is controlling the brightness by flashing the display faster or slower. This can cause a lot of eye strain for some people, not for everyone, but for some people. So let me go ahead and measure this using slow-mo. As you can see at 240 frames per second, the display is flickering and this can bother your eyes or cause eye strain. While you can't see it with your eyes, about one in 10 people are affected. So it can make you feel nauseous, just have intense eye strain, even cause headaches. So if that bothers you, you may want to consider maybe a different Android phone, such as the Pixel 8 Pro, as that seems to be at a higher rate or the S24 Ultra or OnePlus, something along those lines. Now we'll wait for this software to complete installing. And once it does, we can take a closer look at all of the features they've added with Gemini and more. The update is complete. Everything's ready to go, but it's still installing some of the apps from the play store, some of the different background processes, but we should have all of the features now. Now, one of my favorite things that you can do in the past few pixel updates is you can generate your own wallpaper. So if we go down to 
more wallpaper. Then we've got AI generated wallpaper, and then we can just select something we like, whether it's terrain here, and then we can change what it looks like. And we'll say blue and then create a wallpaper. We have to agree to the terms. It's the first time doing it here. Give it a moment to create, and then we'll have an all new wallpaper and we can keep changing this regularly as needed. So there we go. That looks great. We'll press check and then we'll set the wallpaper for both the home and lock screen. So now that we have our wallpaper, some of the new features that are included with this phone are pretty much what we have with the pixel eight pro. So we have circle to search. We have things like that. So if maybe we go to, let's go to Google here and on this website, if we press and hold, we can now try circle to search. You'll see the first time you do that, we'll go ahead and circle Then we can circle whatever we want and it will find what we're looking at. And then we could find whether it's a phone or clothing or a car or something else. So that's built in. We also have the call screening, clear calling, live translate, audio magic eraser, magic photo editor, best take camera and things such as night sight. And when it comes to the camera, you'll see here that we have our rear camera working. So this is the first time I've opened it up on here, but we have two different lens options. So we have a 64 megapixel f 1.9 aperture and a 13 megapixel ultra wide we can record in 4k 60 as far as the video goes so we'll hit done then we'll go to eh, let's get out of all of these little tips here we'll go into our video and then if we go into our video camera you'll see that we can switch over to 4k and we have 4k 60. so if you want to use that you have those options of course the forward facing camera if we spin this around also has video and let's see what our settings are. So we have 4k, but you only have 30 frames per second for the front facing camera. So in general, the cameras on the pixel are great at photos, but not as much at video, but they're great. Overall, we have the forward facing camera. That's a 14 megapixel F 2.2. You'll see, we have our little suggestions row. And if we go into Google, of course we could search for pixel eight pro go into different labs or get AI overviews. If you're using Gemini and Google announced a bunch of different Gemini features today as well at Google IO. Now with this, you'll get seven years of OS security and feature drop updates. How long you get each one of those? I'm not sure. We'll have to wait and see since it hasn't even been seven years since they announced supporting them for seven years, but it's great to actually see that we'll get security updates for at least that long. And so that's pretty much everything with the pixel eight a it's just a less expensive version of the pixel eight pro with different camera options. And at $200, that's a pretty great price. But if there's anything else you want to know about this, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to see a comparison with the pixel eight pro, maybe even the S 24 ultra cameras or something else. Let me hear from you in the comments below as to what you would like to see. Now, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.